Hello, beautiful souls. How are you doing? I believe it's Friday, October 4th. Um, one of the joys of being self-employed, I don't really need to know the date or the day. I just am giving gratitude for waking up each and every one. So today is the second ray of wisdom. I started doing the rays and I was called to do them uh, a while back, but the timing wasn't right. And so I've been really, um, I've always been a little bit of a nerd when it comes to <laughs> learning the truth and diving into what it means for my own lineage. And so this one's pretty special because my soul father, you would know him as Yogananda. Um, one of his incarnations is the Buddha and the second ray of wisdom is associated with the Buddha. And so, um, I feel really connected to this one. Let's dig in. The second ray of wisdom is a consciousness of loving wisdom straight from the heart of the universe. It amplifies the magnetic power of attraction and empowering you to pull into your life all that is needed for your life's work. This requires faith. This absolutely requires faith. Um, there's a lot of well-intentioned analytical minds that try to break down um, the mechanics of manifesting or the mechanics of the law of attraction and they fail. And it's not because they're doing the steps wrong. It's because they lack faith. They lack true faith. That is the power. The faith in the universe, the faith that the universe and the cosmic world that we exist in knows on a much greater detail, what is in our highest and best good more than our ego, which means more than our mind, which means you really do have to have faith. Allowing yourself to receive is a giving up control. And there's a lot of folks that don't want to give up their control out of fear. I believe. And so you really do have to have the faith to overcome that. It brings the opportunity to heal, restore, and understand through the power of love and light. Through the ancient wisdoms, the spiritual master known as the Buddha is with you now to help you fully receive and integrate the blessings of this ray of light from the universe. Because we as humans want to only give it attention or energy to something that we can touch something that we can hold we have to have it in its physical matter for it to be real love is a manifesting power love can change and heal love can lead us in ways that are truly benevolent and it helps us restore and transform that, that which no longer serves us. And when you're stuck in a rut, you're like a hamster on a wheel. You're just going round and round. You're doing what needs to be done and put one foot in front of the other. And I've been there. I can completely empathize with that. There are days when you're just trying to survive. And that's all you know that you can do is put one foot in front of the other. And I give you credit for at least not giving up, but there's more to life. And when you're looking to heal in a true way and find your purpose, follow that path, it requires faith and it requires love. And most of that has to come through you and for you like you have to give love to yourself in order to do that you have to have faith in the universe and the cosmic forces that are working in your favor that they actually do know what you need even if you don't recognize it 
The second ray of wisdom is the energy of the open and loving heart of the universe. It is inclusive and drawing all things toward it with an invisible magnetism. It is gifted to you at this time to help you attract into your life the people, the opportunities, and the teachings that will help you succeed in your life mission. Allowing new people in your in your vortex. So there's the saying, when the student is ready, the teacher arrives. And when your frequency is a certain level, when your frequency rises up to be a certain level, you will encounter new beings or beings that you have not noticed before in a different light because of the frequency. Now it's a match. Now you may be offered teachings or different perspectives and that's where your free will choice comes in, right? And so you want to really be open and this is a this is a big deal that I have encountered where there's this drive for more information, disclosure, truth, you know, all these things that people demand, but they want it to look like they want it to look like they have this preconceived notion of what it is. And anything that is outside of that is discounted. So they have a very narrow window where they're receiving information in and anything that falls outside of that window is discounted. Well, that's not really being open to truth or open to disclosure. You're limiting what you can actually take in. And people do this all the time. It's mostly, again, out of a lack of understanding and true faith. The goal is to have a successful mission while you are honoring your soul contract and path and staying benevolent. So not overtly trying to cause harm to anyone. And so when you surround yourself with the same non-serving beings, the same beings that make it a point to make you feel bad about things in life, well, you didn't make any changes in, in your vortex. And so your information flow is going to be affected by that. So when you truly want change and you truly want for these high frequency, high consciousness things to find you, you really do have to be willing to make some changes in doing so the landscape of your life will look different, but it should also feel much better. It should feel free. It should feel loving, nurturing, connected to life, you know, where you no longer feel isolated and alone, no matter how many people you have around you, you can be the only physical form in an open space and you feel so much more connection to life because you're truly receiving the frequency and that that's just a, a thing that we have to overcome in our indoctrination in our thinking this ray will help you focus your consciousness in your heart it will bring to consciousness any unresolved matters of the heart for healing this is often the shadows one avoids or procrastinates going through the healing. So there's this um, half-assed way people try to get through their shadow work where they recognize something. They knew it all along that they needed to heal from it because it happened to them, right? And they get to the point where they are about to start to feel what they felt whenever it originally happened and they freak out and they go the other direction. They go, okay, I did it. I did it. LFG, LFG, but you didn't, you stop short. You have to go deep into the source of the pain, whatever that event was and feel it until it no longer feels like a sharp knife. When the pain starts to dull and the tears start to fade or the anger starts to fade, or the, the turmoil starts to fade, that's when you can start to process. That's whenever I encourage you to go to forgiveness. Once we truly and completely forgive all involved, 
for me, that's the best place to start. Then I can give love and I can find the gratitude for the lesson. I can find the gratitude for the growth. I can find the gratitude for them showing up in my soul contract. Like we all agreed to ahead of time and allowing this to transpire so that I can evolve out of this phase of my soul growth. This includes not only issues of relationships, but also issues around trusting your heart to lead you because we all have trust issues because we have grown up on a gangster planet and we have been taken advantage of and manipulated and lied to more times than we care to count. But this ray will help you heal your heart in an affirming and nurturing way. And so if that is your true desire, let down your guard long enough to start to heal and things will really start to align for you. The challenge with this ray, given that it is so magnetic and attractive, is learning to discern and say no when you need to. Defining a healthy energetic boundary and be neutral and authentic to enforce them. So that is basically saying you align so well when you start to go through this process that more comes to your door than you than you need and that you want. So you have to say, I'm grateful, but not right now. That's not for me right now. And put a pause on it because you do yourself a disservice trying to process and integrate too many things at one time. Again, there's not a race. This is your journey. It doesn't compare to anyone else's journey. You are unique. Your soul contract was unique. Although there are similarities along the way, you have to give yourself time to process it all. And that takes a minute. <clears throat> it's more than just saying, LFG, I'm done with it. You have to feel it. Feeling is the act of healing. So when you run from your feelings, you are literally causing these wounds to stay open. Imagine a fisherman who casts a very wide net and catches most of the ocean. Well, not everything is useful or even desired by the fisherman. While some things are gratefully accepted, the fisherman takes the other things that are best returned to the ocean where they belong with gratitude. Thank you for offering them, but they're not needed at this time. You can have them back. We must be able to trust in future abundance, it's important that we trust in future abundance. You will not need to hold on to every opportunity, every person or every situation out of fear or loss or feeling of lack. Lack, loss, abandon, poverty, these are all deeply woven into our psyche. It's been fed to us over our entire lifetime and throughout society that we have to work, 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 work and hold on to everything and, and only ration out happiness and ration out love, ration out abundance. Because what if, what if, what if? Well, in the process of ascension, understanding what truly matters, you get to the point where you start to declutter and dematerialize. So you're looking around your space and you're like, none of this really serves the being I am now. I'm going to start to get, get rid of some of this stuff, give it away so that others can benefit from my abundance that I had early on, things that I thought I needed, but they no longer serve the, the me that I am now. And then as you do that, you really do grow into being a more of a minimalist because you understand that all you need is within you. All you need is within. Anything outside of you is extra and not necessary. That's true. Now, there's the seven needs of life. Air, water, sleep, food, shelter, Um meaningful relationships and creativity outside of that everything is up for grabs if you have a space 
full of stuff and you are utterly miserable, I invite you to start get rid of, getting rid of your stuff. Give it to people that can get use out of it. Give it to those that are less fortunate. Um, I don't know, whatever makes your heart feel good. But the less stuff you have, the more you can actually connect through your heart center to the divine, to nature. And you pull yourself out of the electronic suck where your face is just not in a device all the time. And you're out living, encountering life, nature. That is where life is. Instead, you are learning to live in the true abundance and flow, practice feeling comfortable and letting go as well as receiving. And I've seen this in my own life, but also in others. When they start to go down the path of decluttering their physical space, they start to declutter their mind. And then that helps them to receive the things that they've been asking for for a very long time. All of a sudden, it's coming into alignment because they made room. You, you, you have to make room. You have to get rid of the junk that doesn't belong there, which is also the shadows. So decluttering your physical space helps you declutter your mental space, helps you declutter your soul. So you're doing shadow work all along the way because you're processing as you're getting rid of stuff. Trust that the universe has all that you want and need an unlimited supply. The universe will truly provide for your, you, dear children of light. These trust issues, holding on to things that don't serve us, um, things that we label as true abundance, it actually keeps genuine, authentic abundance at bay because we are holding close to us things that have attachments to shadows and those shadows have to be worked through. So, you know, if you're holding on to assets of any kind and they are linked to or tied to things that have deep trauma it is my advice to you that you um sell them give them give them away whatever feels right to you to fully and completely detach from that and let it go when you do Things that you cannot even fathom will fall into your vortex. You will then align to greater abundance because you've let this go fully and completely. There's many, many, many people. I did this after, uh, after my husband transitioned. Um, I filled the void or I attempted to with stuff. That's what we do. We're lonely and we're hurting and there's this hole in our heart. And you think, well, I just got, it. I'm going to buy some clothes. I'm going to get some new shoes. That'll make me feel better. Oh, I'm going to get that back. You know, and then you get stuff. You get stuff to fill the hole in your heart and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. And every time you look at that stuff, you think about the hole in your heart. You think about what was going on when you decided to get this stuff. And it's just not in your highest and best good. The stuff truly can be replaced. Your heart is your heart and you need to heal it, whatever that takes. This is very different way of thinking to how most humans are conditioned from an early age, but it's never too late to change one's mind and open one's heart to more loving, abundant, and enjoyable way to live. The way humans are taught to live is really we're being taught how to survive, right? We're taught to work, eat, sleep, work, repeat, work, eat, sleep, work, repeat, work, eat, sleep, work, repeat. And then you get a couple of days off to rest and try to squeeze in all the things that make you feel alive in a half of a day. And then you get, get prepared to go back to work, eat, sleep, repeat, work, eat, sleep, repeat. That's not living. That's not thriving. That is surviving. That's why we feel like we're in survival mode all the time. 
When the Buddha comes into your world, he brings the gift of wisdom. That includes openness to all that is without judgment. Gosh, judgment. Such a pill. Judgment is a low-frequency act that causes core wounds and souls. Shadow work and healing will guide you away from judging. This might be a struggle that will eventually be revealed as a blessing in disguise. It might be the challenge that causes you to grow into readiness for that next phase of your divine life mission. Finally, as the second ray of wisdom relates particularly to teachers and education, you are encouraged to trust that you have a message to share and that it is helpful and educational for others. When I accepted to step into my mission, I was called to share my messages with people. And I know my role is to share what I'm led to share. It's not up to me. I don't really determine um, what to share with you in a message. Like I said, I was led to the, the light rays months ago. But it wasn't the right time. And I always ask for guidance on what I should be sharing with the collective. It's not up to me to determine how you receive it, but I'm giving it to you in the way directed to me from the divine. It's my intention to drop the seed that grows in your intuition. Whether your involvement in education and teaching is formal or less obvious, you are encouraged to honor the energy of the teacher in your life. We all have something to share. In some ways, your sole purpose likely involves helping others to learn through wisdom and through love. Paramahansa Yogananda, my soul father, on this last incarnation, 1893 to 1952, was also incarnated as Buddha. His message to the collective. Once you realize worldly wisdom lives within you, meditation becomes more motivated in order to attune to the divine and nothing is impossible. In chaos, keep stillness within. If you want to be loved, be lovable. The wisdom and love we are to realize and share flows freely from within as we connect to the divine. If you're ready to receive this blessing, verbally accept as I read this invocation. Invocation for the second ray of wisdom. And I'm going to do this, so I'm going to go ahead and give my actual soul name and title. I, Queen Andalusia of Royal Orders and Spiritual Gifts, now accept of my own free will the blessing and grace of the second ray of wisdom in my life. Through unconditional love and divine mercy, I open my heart with joy to the magnetic and creative field of attraction. I greatly open up to the abundance in all ways with trust, wisdom, and serenity. You, the universe provides all that I want and need with grace, love, and perfect timing. Thank you, universe. I call on the loving assistance of the genuine ascended master known as the Buddha in all aspects of this process so that all beings can receive the loving benefit of this spiritual gift according to the divine compassion through divine grace, so be it. Divine love, compassion, and wisdom are divine gifts of Yeshua's teachings. To Christ consciousness is unity consciousness, and this is the consciousness frequency of the fifth dimension, and I'll meet you there. Please visit VioletLotusEnergy.com for our services and offerings. If you truly want to get clear and connect with your divine spirit team, you get a QET session and you're on your way. I look forward to talking to you again next time. And I hope you enjoy this message. It'll be the third ray will be the next video. Take care.